Hey, welcome to my Shakeology presentation. I'm going to be doing this based off of a slideshow that I have, so I'll be reading from my monitor, which is just to the right of the camera, so when you see me looking over, it's because I'm reading, and then I'll be talking into the camera. So to start with, the agenda for this presentation, I'm going to talk about information, trends that are out there, and the slide edge effect and how it works. I'll answer what is Shakeology, how does it work, and what makes it so ultra premium. I may even get into some cost-saving strategies since that's the number one thing for a lot of people out there, especially today. I will start with information and trends. This is from Newsweek magazine. America has a nutritional health crisis. Childhood obesity rates have tripled in the past three decades and the excess weight kids are carrying these days has increased the risk of developing diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, cancer, and asthma. Now before this generation, those were things that were associated with adults and that we thought of, and not anymore. Now it's in our kids, diabetes and being obese and all the diseases and illnesses that are associated with being obese, which, believe me, there's a lot of them, and now it's affecting our kids. If we take care of just that one problem, being overweight, especially in the obese ca category, then a lot of those other problems are taken care of uh, by default, like um, the high blood pressure and the heart disease and high cholesterol and a whole host of other problems. Information and trends. America has a nutritional health crisis. Good, we just said that. Uh, we are addicted to bad foods. Junk food addiction may be real. In a study of rats, the more fattening foods they ate, the more food they wanted. And we're actually, we operate the same way as human beings on that level. We are overfed and undernourished. What does it mean to be overfed and undernourished? How is that possible? It's possible with empty calories. A prime example of that would be the quote unquote value meals at fast food restaurants. You can easily put on a thousand calories in one of those things. And have you ever noticed after scarfing down all that food that you don't really feel satisfied? Your body isn't being fed. It's because those calories do not have nutrients in them. So your body is constantly saying, give me more. It's a perfect concoction to put on weight and to get really fat and get all those horrible diseases and illnesses that come with being obese as we're seeing right now in our country. So if you're eating something that's high dense in nutrients where the calories are actually nutrient dense and not empty, you'd be surprised with how little, little amounts of food, calories that it takes to actually fill you up and that's an ideal way for losing weight and getting healthy. America has a nutritional health care crisis. That's on the top of every slide. I should probably stop reading that. We are addicted to bad food. Real people are getting sick. Experts now project an entire generation of kids may die 20 years earlier than their parents because of diseases caused by being overweight. Overweight cannot be underplayed. Um, I don't think it can be overplayed either for that matter. 20 years. This is the first time in our history that our kids that are being born today are not expected to outlive their parents. And it's by 20 years. It's not even by a little bit. How can that be? We've slid so far backwards. Something that, in the spirit of any good conscience, needs to be reversed. And we do have the power to do that because this is all choice related. It's not like we were plagued by something that we have no control over. This is all choice, folks. Derived from choices, I should say. Why is this happening? We don't eat healthy. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. The food is less nutritious. Industrial agriculture is degrading the, nu the nutritional quality of our foods. Um, look at farmed animals, for example. Most of the farm animals that we eat are not uh, caged free. They're trapped in cages, they're pumped full of growth hormones, and they're made to live in environments that would otherwise kill them if it weren't for the antibiotics that we pump them full of to keep them alive in environments that would otherwise kill them. And then we eat this stuff. No wonder why there's so many illnesses out there. Even in people that, that seem healthy and exercise regularly, they're eating these animals that have all these chemicals in them. And the long-term effects, they're, they're pretty dire. And then there's the crops that farmers grow. Most farmers, because the consumer demand wants it, uh, they use chemical fertilizers and toxins and things like that. Um, the organic farmer is by far the minority, and or organic, by the way, just means that they don't use any chemicals or harmful pesticides. 
there was ways to, to grow crops and to keep them the insects off of them and everything else um, in an organic way that doesn't use any toxins and chemicals that, that harm us. And in the, the great Midwest farm belt, uh, there is so much of this stuff, it actually empties into the Mississippi River, the toxins, the fertilizers, the bad chemicals, and so on and so forth. And it goes all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico, where the mouth of the river is the Mississippi River and the Gulf of Mexico. There is actually what's considered a dead zone, where marine life cannot live. That's why it's called a dead zone. This dead zone is 8,500 miles square. That's astonishing. And it's also growing. It's growing because we keep uh, fertilizing our crops with these deadly fertilizers and these toxins and these poisons that eventually run off into the Mississippi River and down on into the Gulf of Mexico. We're literally killing the planet, and the planet is where we get all of our resources, 100% of them. That's another thing that is not sustainable. We have to reverse that. The only way we can reverse that is if we start buying organic foods, period. That's it. Another thing about that method of farming with the chemicals is uh, it creates a soil depletion, causes nutrient and mineral deficiencies. And then we continue to eat the crops that are grown in those soils with the mineral deficiencies. Now, according to two-time Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Linus Pauling, he says, you can trace every sickness, every disease, and every ailment to a mineral deficiency. As my computer freezes, I wait for the next slide. Okay, the slide edge effect. Slight nutrient deficiencies add up over time. I don't think anybody's really gonna get sick or, or gonna die from one day's worth of bad eating or one week or maybe even a month. It usually takes years. And likewise, nobody's gonna get healthy or save a life with one day or one week or whatever of good eating. And that's perhaps arguably um, the single biggest problem with our culture. If we don't get results the day of, then forget about it. We're not interested. So I guess the devil is in the details. The devil's got us there. All we, all, all we have to do is not have a, an attention span that goes past the end of our noses and we're screwed. And that's exactly what's happening. And this is something that applies to life in general. Successful people are often um, separated from unsuccessful people by and large in that successful people realize that it's those little things that you do every day that add up over time that makes all the difference. And unsuccessful people don't realize that or they do and they don't care, who knows. But uh, that's the slide edge effect. It's those daily little things that you do, seemingly insignificant, that add up over time. If you eat healthy every day, you'll be rewarded. If you don't, you'll be exposed. And it's that simple. That's, uh, that's the gist of the slide edge effect. But to go on with this slide, the slide edge nutrients deficiencies add up over time. This issue slowly leads to digestive problems, which leads to irritable bowel syndrome and colitis. It leads to weight gain, which leads to obesity and diabetes. Obesity, as I said earlier, leads to all sorts of health problems, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, strokes, um, cardiovascular incidences, PAD, CAD. Um, just take care of that one problem and you take care of so many things, just controlling your weight. But it's not everything. It's just a big, a big chunk of the pie. Um, it also leads to mental imbalances, which can lead to anxiety depression. People that exercise regularly and eat good healthy food are typically not very depressed people. Inflammation, 